Hi, and welcome to this uh, month's seminar. Uh, my name is Art Bergeron. If you haven't seen these presentations before, I do these monthly seminars um, to talk about a whole variety of senior issues. And it's now November of 2022, and excuse me, it's now November of 2021. And so people right now are in the midst of maybe thinking about Medicare and what to do about it for this year because it's open enrollment. Uh, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about that because this is so important to seniors. Now remember, whenever I'm doing presentations, I always talk about my friends Frank and Mary and the fact that their goal in life, as many of the goal of life for most of us now, is to sleep well at night. Uh, but the older that we get, um, the worry that we have, or one of the worries that keeps us up at night, is the worry that we're going to run out of money. Um, and that really relates to uh, you know, insurance questions. So the, the, as I always talk about, you know, I'm talking about my friends today, Frank and Mary, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Uh, and and they, they're worrying about this now because they're older. When they were younger, they had a different set of worries. Um, and these worries were, there were, uh, people worry about a lot of things, but this presentation really is about worry about money and how to deal with worry about money. Um, and so what they worried about when the kids were younger there were a whole variety of things, you know, where well, the kids are going to get hurt and, you know, they got to cover that through insurance and is the house going to burn down? Are we going to get into a car accident? And once again, you, you, the insurance doesn't prevent the car accident and it doesn't prevent the house from burning down. What it does is it pays for the result. That's kind of the essence of insurance. And then as, as Frank and Mary got older, um, the worries about the kids um, went away. Um, they kept worrying though about their house, you know, oh my God, what if it burns down? So they've got to keep the car insurance or excuse me, the house insurance. They need the car insurance in case there's an accident. What if one of us drops dead? They worry about that. Because, and certainly it's not that they could prevent the other person from dropping dead, but what they wanted to make sure was, uh, especially in, in um, oftentimes in Mary's case, that if Frank dropped dead, that how is Mary going to live? And so the life insurance was really there to make sure that the other person was going to be healthy. Now, finally, you get to our age, right? The age of my friends, Frank and Mary. I often tell folks, I have no clients under age 55. My median client age is 74. I love it because people think that I'm young. I'm going to be 72 in January. So you get to our age or above our age. And oftentimes, even those house and car worries have gone away because it may be that you've moved, that you have moved to an assisted living community, that you've done something else. Uh, it may be that you're not using the car, that you only have one car. But the, the thing that keeps growing as a worry is issues related to health. Um, you know, what, what happens if there's a problem? What happens if I have, something happens at the house? What's, you know, can I, it, it, there's gonna be an ambulance, I'm gonna go to the hospital. What's this all going to cost? That becomes the big senior worry as you get older. And the answer to that worry was, has, is Medicare. Now, it is no one in, in, a kind of in this generation, including me, can remembers life before Medicare. And they don't re remember a world like the world in 1960, where 33% of all senior households um, lived in poverty. Um, now remember, this was 1960, so it was almost 30 years after Social Security. The issue was that people were going broke because they needed medical care and they couldn't get medical insurance. Um, today, that figure is 6%. 6% of senior households um, uh, live in poverty. And the major reason is because of Medicare. So it's the, it, Medicare is this, this huge umbrella. Now it's not an umbrella that covers everything. It was never perceived to be or conceived as an umbrella that would cover everything. It was going to try to cover most things. That was the goal. So I want to talk a little bit about Medicare because, it, and the pieces of Medicare, because you, unless you understand that, it's hard to understand what all this other stuff is about. It's all a kind of a, it's all becomes kind of a mush. So uh, there are two kinds of traditional Medicare. That's Medicare A and Medicare B. Uh, Medicare A, for which you are not, as a senior, paying any kind of premium, um, is simply you're entitled to it by virtue of the fact that you're 65 or older. And it pays for a certain cluster of things. It pays for your hospital stay. 
if, if that's really an emergency. Medicare was actually one of the biggest drivers of Medicare was the, 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 the hospital association nationally that was saying we really need this so that we don't all go under if there's some kind of a serious medical problem. I mean, imagine, imagine having go, going through the pandemic if there were no Medicare A and people, older seniors couldn't just couldn't go to the hospital and pay for it, where, where that would have put things. So it pays for hospitals. It pays for a living, limited number of days at the hospital. And, there, and there's actually, the, the, if I recall correctly, the first day you actually pay. There's a, the, and then after that, it pays for a given number of days, uh, like 60. Um, once, you're, once you're past that number of days, you can t Medicare will continue to pay as long as you have not exhausted your lifetime pool. There actually is a lifetime pool of number of days uh, after which Medicare stops. Uh, Medicare covers the first 100 days in the nursing home. Uh, now, once again, um, the first 20 days, Medicare pays 100%. Um, the, next, uh, the next 80 days, Medicare pays a percentage of the bill. Uh, Medicare stops after 100 days. That's the reason why so many people um, who are seniors focus on mass health in case they get stuck in a nursing home. Um, Medicare also pays for, and this is the, 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 the benefit that people are least aware of, Medicare will pay for these stays at home. Uh, if you can demonstrate that you're homebound and your doctor says that you need uh, regular care, whether that's care from uh, an occupational therapist or a nurse or a physical therapist, Medicare will pay for the, any plan that has been approved that, that by your doctor um, that indicates that this, these kinds of medical, this kind of medical assistance is necessary. Medicare won't pay, will not pay for, for um, uh, um, non-medical care. Um, these 60-day uh, plans, by the way, are renewable forever. So that, you know, incidentally, if that's your issue and you think you need some care at home, you can stay at home uh, and these 60-day these plans can simply be re renewed by your doctor until you die. Finally, Medicare care covers hospice to the extent that you have decided that you want the nature of your care to be different, that you don't want it to be about trying to get you better because you've decided that the, the, even if it's possible to get you better, the chances of it are so small or the side effects are so great that you don't want to put up with that. Then Medicare will pay for the cost of basically helping you to live each one of your, your days for the rest of your life as well as possible. That's Medicare A. Medicare B, when you hear about, oh, Medicare pays like a percentage of your bills, they're typically talking about Medicare B. For Medicare B, actually you do pay a premium and you're required to pay the premium and the premium actually varies depending upon your, uh, your income and goes up with greater income now as a result of Obamacare. Um, and, and, but in addition to paying that premium, um, you're also going to be, be paying responsible for co-pays. Uh, um, now this, this is the program that pays for doctors, it pays for day treatments at the hospital, it pays for uh, diagnostic, diagnostic tests, it pays for durable medical equipment, uh, it pays for everything else other than kind of like the basic hospital and the, uh, the benefits that I described with Medicare A, except typically um, the Medicare will, will, they won't simply take your doctor's bill and pay it. Uh, they will evaluate whether your doctor's bill, which one is lower, your doctor's bill or what Medicare considers to be the reasonable cost of this service in this area. Medicare will then pay 80% of that number. Um, for a tremendous number of things. Uh, and, and, and it is because of the fact that Medicare A has you know, a, just a few deductibles, but Medicare B has these huge potential co-pays. Uh, it is as a result of that that most people will buy a Medicare supplement plan. And the purpose of the supplement plan is to pay for some or all of the deductibles and the co-pays. And so if chances are, if you have med standard Medicare, and most of you do, uh, chances are you're also buying one of these supplements. And, and, and as you probably know from having done this before, uh, these, pl these plans, the supplement plans, you can, the more you pay in premium, 
the more the supplement is going to pay if the supplement is needed. So you're, once again, you're always trying to evaluate, well, you know, how much do I, re how much do I really need? And the, and the interesting thing about that evaluation for you, and this applies to everything that we're talking about today, is that as opposed to most insurance that pretty much continues year to year and it just kind of goes along, Medicare, all Medicare insurance plans by federal law um, have to be renewed every year. All of those plans by federal law can change every year. Uh, and, and, and so you actually have the ability every year to kind of evaluate how you're doing and figure out kind of what the best plan might be for you next year. So anyway, it's, it, it, your, right now is the time that you would also, you may want to be looking at what your Medicare supplemental plan is if you have Medicare A and B. And then of course, there's Medicare D. Medicare D, uh, probably one of the greatest creations of the, of the George W. Bush administration, the, great, the drug plan. Medicare D uh, is not a plan that is basically paid for by the federal government. It's a plan that's basically paid for by you um, because you're paying a, a, an annual premium for the plan that you think is going to help you pay for your drug costs next year. Uh, now, once again, depending on the amount of the premium that you're paying, uh, that will also affect in the, in, the event that, in the event that you use these drugs, whether you're paying, need to pay a copay, whether there's going to be a deductible before you have, have to start paying for your drugs. And also, uh, Medicare D plans are going to vary in terms of what drugs get covered. So there's a lot to think about on Medicare D plans. Um, one of the issues with the Medicare D plan is, is that, um, it, is that you're, you're, you're guessing as to what drugs you may need next year uh, and the D plan that you right now have and that actually may have served you very well right now and that you think is therefore great may have changed. Uh, it may not, <laughs> I was going to say it may not be there any longer. There were 28 Medicare D plans that were offered in 2020. This year there are only 21. So some of the plans that get offered, you may be on a plan that is no longer in existence or there is not going to be in existence as of January 1. So you need, you know, what you need to do right now is to try to figure, is to figure out which one of these plans you want to buy. Um, finally, <clears throat> except in Nantucket, and, or excuse, excuse me, except on Nantucket and on Martha's Vineyard and in a few other places in the state, there are Medicare C plans, often referred to as Medicare Advantage plans. The notion behind these plans, they were adopted or approved by the Congress decades ago, and the notion was to allow the private sector uh, to offer plans that were comparable to or better than Medicare A plus Medicare B. And it was subsequent, by the way, to Medicare C that Medicare D got adopted, and once that happened, these plans, the Medicare Advantage plans, all had to offer uh, at least comparable things to Medicare A plus B plus D. So, so the Medicare C plans are always comprehensive plans. Um, and these are plans that you may want to look at. We're going to talk about those a little bit more um, a little bit later on. Um, Medicare C plans, or so-called Medicare Advantage plans, have become extremely popular around the country and are used now by more than a third of all seniors around the country. In Massachusetts, like they haven't kicked in. Uh, there were only about 25% of Massachusetts residents use them. And I think it's just that you kind of get used to the, the habit of, of just being on your st a standard Medicare. So we're gonna talk about those a little bit more. But you, once again, um, on Medicare C plans, uh, each company that offers them will offer a variety of premium levels. And depending on which level you buy, that's going to affect, once again, what the co-pays are and what the deductibles are, are going to be later on. The other thing about these Medicare C plans, though, is that they'll often offer things that are not there in traditional Medicare. They have to offer all of the services that traditional Medicare offers. They can also offer things like uh, eyeglass coverage uh, and dental protection. 
uh, or um, healthy, just healthy living coverage, so-called preventive medicine. Me uh, Medicare, uh, traditional Medicare was built around uh, making sure that if you had, that you had a traditional medical emergency, that was going to get taken care of. At that time, a, doc, a, a dental, you know, a, 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 te a tooth problem was not considered to be that. Needing glasses was not considered to be that. And there was very little at the time these programs were developed around trying to keep you healthy. So the point, one of the big points of the Medicare C plans is to provide uh, incentives for you, like paying, for example, for, your, for the gym costs, the so-called healthy sneakers or the silver sneakers program. Um, so there are programs that are designed to, to keep you healthy. Now, the good news and the bad news about all of these plans. Um, the good news is there's a tremendous amount of variety. You can change all of these plans um, every year, uh, once a year between October 15th and December 7th. We're in the middle, middle of the Medicare um, re-enrollment period right now. The bad news is, and this is really the theme of this presentation, you will, you will never figure this out yourself. Or if you do, it's because you just love doing this stuff and you're spending a lot of time doing it. So the, the question for you really going forward is, so you've got all, you're, you're in the middle of the, of the re-enrollment period, you've got all these options, so you know, how do you even think about this? And I, I would suggest that you, you, you should be kind of thinking about this in a particular order. First of all, figure out what it would cost you if you were on traditional Medicare Figure out your best drug plan, your best Medicare D plan. Because while a, a, a lot of Medicare, as we've talked about, is really meant to cover emergency situations that may occur occasionally, that you may be going through right now, but probably not, right? But D plans, most people are taking drugs. Now, I feel like I, I admit I'm one of the exceptions, I take no drugs. Uh, that may change, you know, I'm going to be 72 in January. Most people, most seniors, that's what they worry about. They're taking some kind of drug and so they're worried about what's going to be the cost of that drug. Um, am I going to need more? So they need to figure that out. So first of all, figure out your Medicare D plan. Second, look at um, the, your, your, your Medicare A and Medicare B supplemental coverage, which you probably already have, uh, and look at what level of premium you think it's appropriate for you for the next year. So you want to kind of think about that. Once you've done all of that, then look at, look at the cost, at the, look at the bottom line. So what, it, what am I anticipating if I stay with that package of plans uh, or if I change to a new Medicare or Medicare D plan and stay with, stay with the rest of the traditional Medicare? What's that going to cost me? And then look at the Medicare C plans, look at the Medicare Advantage plans if they're available and evaluate for yourself whether you think that's going to be a better deal. Finally, as I say, get some help with this. Get some help with this. So regarding your Medicare D plans, um, there, you, there is probably a shine counselor at your senior center who can help you figure this out. There are some just terrific shine counselors. I'm going to mention one in a moment. But these people are all acting as volunteers, uh, but many of them are on staff at senior centers. Others are, are just acting as volunteers, but they're not on staff. Um, but the point is they get trained every year in eva evaluate, in first of all, knowing the tools, knowing the Medicare tool that is out there to help you figure out all this coverage, and then really helping to, to, you to try to evaluate that. So there are typically so-called shine counselors uh, at senior centers, and incidentally, these shine counselors, every senior center is open to every senior. And if you call a shine, if you call your uh, senior center, and their and they and their shine counselors are booked out, they'll talk to you about going to one of the other senior centers in the area. Um, there is also a, a wonderful group at the Mass, Mass College of Pharmacy and Healthcare Sciences. Um, these are folks that are who are training pharmacists all the time, and they have a really really wonderful program that does something similar. And then there are private advisors. There aren't many. Um, I'm going to mention one just because wor I've worked with him a lot. And I know he's really good. His name is Peter McKay, and he's on Nantucket. But and the key thing about private advisor, your advisors to help you figure all of this out, 
is that none of this is locally based. You know, you don't need to be going down to your neighborhood person to be talking about any of this stuff. This all happens by phone or by Zoom or on the internet. All the evaluations can be done pretty much anywhere. Um, but but, I would, but, but you, when you're trying to figure that out, you're trying to figure out your Medicare D plan, you have to kind of look at a set of issues. Um, first of all, what drugs are you now taking? What drugs are you now taking? Uh, secondly, what does your doctor think about what's going on next year, right? Um, in terms of is that, are those the drugs you're gonna be taking? Then you, you, you need to know, so what's the dose, what's your strength? What, what, how many milligrams per pill? How many whatever? What's the strength of that, do, of that dosage? And finally, how many pills do you need per day or per week or per month? And, and then you can actually calculate not only what the Medicare D um, premium is going to be for that package, but you're also going to be able to, to calculate for yourself how much is your deductible going to be. Because the real bottom line is not how much is the premium you're paying, but what's your total bill. So on the one hand, so for folks like me who are using like zero drugs um, and probably don't, and don't anticipate a big health emergency next year, probably the plan with the lowest premium is a really sensible choice for me because all I'm trying to make sure of is if there's an emergency, there's going to be some coverage. If on the other hand, I'm using a set of drugs regularly and I can kind of predict what that's going to be for the next year, it may be that I need a higher um, premium plan because it's going to cover the drugs. Because the question is, when you look in the mirror, what are you thinking might change next year, right? How much risk do you want to take? How much risk do you want to take? How much risk do you want to take? And how much risk can you afford to take? Because this is all what this is about. This is all about figuring out, this is an insurance risk. How much money am I willing to spend because it's going to help me sleep knowing that if an emergency happens, I'm going to get covered. So when you're trying to figure this out, among other things, when, you're, when, when, when your advisor, your shine person or your private person is looking through all of this, they're going to look at your current drugs and say, so, you know, are there any of these that could be handled by generics? Or are there any drugs, they're not generic versions of the same drug, but they're a different drug that the doctor simply didn't prescribe because he had other options and he described the one you prescribed. So are there some drugs that where, where you want to actually go back and talk to your doctor and say, well, you know, I know that you're prescribing this now, but what if I try that? And the doctor may say, oh, that would work fine too. Uh, you, don't, you know, the point is, those are the, don't assume that because the doctor prescribed a particular one, that, he, that the only, that's the only thing that works. He wasn't prescribing with cost in mind. He was just prescribing based on, he was one of, among, an, among a set of alternatives that was going to deal with your health problem. So it may be that there's some other drug that can also deal with that health problem. Uh, and then finally, look at the so-called Prescription Advantage Program. It's a special program available in Massachusetts that will, through, through which you, uh, depending on your income level, and it has nothing to do with assets, just income, may be able to get reductions in your drug plans here. Um, and, and I talked about private folks, but I also talked about shine counselors. So I'm just mentioning Carolyn McLeod because she's just the best. And, She's a Shine counselor, volunteer, lives in Southboro, retired. You talk to her, she gets so pumped up about this stuff. She is so interested. Her favorite thing about her job is that she's actually saving people money, like thousands and tens of thousands of dollars every year. I remember that she had estimated. And, that, and she's a good way to kind of segue into the Medicare C plans because her, while she talks a lot about the, the, uh, the drug plans, her big thing is to make sure that you've looked at Medicare C as an alternative. And kind of her, her mantra, she told me, was that all other things being equal, the sicker you are, the more you may be wanting to migrate back to traditional Medicare A and B, because that coverage tends to be better for, for, uh, for a lower price. The less sick you are, or the more you want to be concentrating on wellness and these other kind of other issues, the more these Medicare Advantage plans are attractive to you. But once again, I'm taught th that's a very broad statement, right? Covering a whole lot of people. Only you know 
what your needs are and, and what you expect your needs are going to be and what level of risk you want to take. So you need to go talk to uh, a shine counselor. You need to figure out what you actually spent this year on all of these different things and then try to evaluate next year because your needs may change. Most importantly, your plan may change. The same plan may be different next year um, and the old plan may be not the right plan. So take advantage of the resources that are out there, figure all this out, and then you just save yourself a lot of money, go buy yourself dinner. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Once again, the goal of this is peace of mind. Uh, if you've got any questions on any of this, um, you know, please you know, check us out on Facebook. I'm also going to be doing two special programs this month, which you should also find there. Uh, one interviewing Peter McKay, and the other one I, uh, interviewing a Shine counselor, hopefully, uh, Carolyn McLeod if she can squeeze me in. So thank you very much for watching. Once again, if you've got any questions, give me a call. 508-860-1470. My beeper says the presentation's over. Thank you.